Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing air side considerations with chilled beams. If you are unfamiliar with the Price Active Selection software, it is recommended to watch the selection software tutorial beforehand. First, let's review the typical conditions of a chilled beam selection with regards to the room conditions and primary air conditions. For room set points, 75 degree Fahrenheit dry bulb at 50% RH for cooling and 70 to 72 dry bulb for heating are very typical. For primary air conditions, 55 degree dry bulb for cooling and heating is typical, but let's examine how the primary air conditions can affect our selections. Let's start with entering a few zone inputs. I will call this beam CB-1 with 10,000 BTU sensible load and a latent load of 3,000. Notice when I entered a latent load, the program generated a minimum primary air. Based on psychrometrics, the program is telling me I need a minimum of 326 CFM in order to meet my latent load. With beam selections, it is important to give consideration to air handler selection, especially the dew point at which the primary air will be supplied. If I go back to the left hand air conditions, I can affect change in my minimum air requirement depending on the dry bulb temperature and the relative humidity on the cooling side. The current conditions reflect a dew point of 49 degree Fahrenheit and a moisture content of 51.3 grains per pound. A change to the relative humidity of the primary air, let's say dropping to 75% RH, we can see the dew point drop approximately 1.7 degrees and we see a 3.2 grains per pound moisture depression of the moisture content in the air. By doing this, I have now dropped the minimum air requirement from 326 CFM down to 262, which is approximately a 20% decrease. The same can be said if I were to add moisture to the primary air by increasing the RH up to 85%. Now our air requirement is higher. Now that we understand the effect of our air handler selection on the beam selection, let's revert back to the original conditions and do an example selection. Let's look at an example classroom application. We have an area of roughly 750 square feet at typical set point conditions of 75 degree Fahrenheit dry bulb at 50% RH. We also have a window areas totaling 100 square feet. In the room, we have 25 students, an instructor, lighting, and three computers. If we total the outputs from all of these heat sources, we come up with 16,925 BTUs, which I will put as a sensible cooling load, and approximately 5,200 BTU for the space latent load. If we input these zone requirements into the spreadsheet, the program will again generate minimum outside air ventilation requirement, this time at 565 CFM. Now this ventilation requirement can also be calculated via ASHRAE 62.1 at 0.12 CFM per square foot and 10 CFM per person for classroom applications, we actually only have a ventilation requirement of 350 CFM. However, we need a minimum of 565 CFM in order to meet the latent load in the space. ASHRAE's ventilation rate is all we need to satisfy the outside air requirement. So in order to meet the latent load, I can go to my primary air conditions of my air handler and affect a change by lowering the relative humidity as an example. By decreasing the RH from 80 to 68%, I have now effectively dropped the moisture content of this air, so I need less air than at my previous air conditions. Now my air requirement drops down to 357, which is almost exactly where I need to be per the ASHRAE vent rate of 350. Now I can select my model type and proceed with my selections which I can do manually, but I can also use the auto selection tool as a starting point. Let's take a look at one more example. This time a typical office application where the space conditions are the same as the classroom example. In this room, however, we have 10 employees and a computer monitor set per employee. The lighting remains the same. If we total the outputs from all of these heat sources, we come up with 15,081 BTUs, which I will put as the sensible cooling load and approximately 2,000 BTUs for the space latent load. If we input these zone requirements into the spreadsheet, the program will again generate minimum outside air requirement of 217 CFM to meet the latent load. ASHRAE 62.1 would only require 95 CFM for this space at 0 0.06 CFM per square foot and 5 CFM per person for office applications. We will need the 200 CFM to meet the latent load. 
Like the classroom application, I can go to my primary air conditions and adjust the parameters to try and meet the ASHRAE requirement of 95 CFM. However, this would require dropping down to a dew point of almost 38 degree Fahrenheit, which may be too low to achieve. So for the office, we can raise the air conditions back to more typical settings and make selections, which I can do either manually or use my auto selection. Overall, these examples show that by using ASHRAE 62.1, the minimum outside air requirements in the space can be lower than the air required to meet the latent load. The classroom example shows if we can drop our dew point of our primary air, we can use less air in the classroom space to meet both latent and minimum ventilation requirements. The office space required a more aggressive approach to decrease the air, but the main takeaway should be that the goal of chilled beam systems is to reduce the amount of primary air needed in comparison to a typical all-air system, which both of my systems do. Now we have an understanding of the importance of giving consideration to air handler selection when doing selections for a chilled beam application.